In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. It's great to be with all of you. As always, we'd like to start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many wonderful titles. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. Also, when we pray that beautiful prayer at the end of the rosary, we also invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's invite Mary to be with us, to pray with us, and to pray for us as we pray that prayer that Mary loves most, and that prayer is the Hail Mary, also known as the Angelic Salutation. So together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let's turn to our spiritual director, who is the Holy Spirit. He also has many different descriptive names. He's known as the Paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of gifts. He's also known as the sweet guest of the soul. He's also known as the counselor, as well as the consoler. He's also known as the Interior Master, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, reminds us with these words that we really don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so we can say, Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's unite ourselves and pray to the Holy Spirit and beg the Holy Spirit the interior master to give us a lot of light in our intellect, and to set our hearts on fire with the love of God as well as the love of our neighbor. If we love God, we should love our brothers and sisters in the heart of the Lord. As we pray, the classical prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit.
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. John Leonardi, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great to be with all of you. The family that prays together stays together. And the world at prayer is a world at peace. The words of Father Patrick Payton. So my friends, after praying with you, I'll pray for you. Right after I prayed with you, I'll pray for you. And I'd like to pray for you in the greatest of all prayers, and that prayer is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. No greater prayer in the world than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to pray, first of all, that all of us would be open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come to the heart of Mary. That's right. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come to the Heart of Mary. My next prayer in prayer intention will be I'd like to pray for our families, for the conversion, for the sanctification and the salvation of our family members. Our Lord says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but he loses his soul? And my next intention will be I'd like to pray for all those who will be dying sometime today. that they will be given the grace of final repentance and to be saved. The grace of all graces, my friends, the grace of all graces would be to die in the state of grace. That's why I repeat, the grace of all graces would be to die in the state of grace. beg for that because my friends we don't know the day nor the hour Jesus says it will come like a thief in the night so my friends let's pray with each other and pray for each other
My friends, right now I'd like to jump into the gospel for today and spend time developing the gospel with you. We're in the Gospel of St. Luke. Just a, be, a brief recap. This week we started off with the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are the wounded person. But Christ wants to heal us. Either we will be wounded wounders or wounded healers. We allow Christ, the divine physician, to heal our wounds. Then we can be wounded healers in a broken and wounded world. Following that, the gospel yesterday is the gospel of Bethany in which we encounter Jesus invited by his friends, Mary and Martha, to his house. Mary is sitting at the feet of Christ, absorbing his words, listening to him and contemplating his face. Martha is worried and anxious. She turns to the Lord and says, Lord, tell my sister help to help me. Jesus responds, Martha, Martha, you're worried about many things. Mary has chosen the best part and she will not be deprived of it. An interpretation of this key look and passage is we all have we all have some of the Martha within us. What we have to beg for, we have to beg for the grace to have a harmonious balance and integration between our contemplative life and our active life. Most of us, if not all of us, were not contemplative monks. Rather, we're living in the world. We're called to be contemplatives in action. For that reason, I, I repeat, we have to strive to strike a balance, to have a harmonious integration between our active life in our prayer life, our life of work in our life of contemplation. So there's a recap of Luke chapter 10. The gospel for today is a classic. The apostles would with a certain frequency see our Lord pull pull aside from the crowd and he would be he would go off to pray. And sometimes he'd be praying the whole night. So the apostles aware of Jesus dedicating time, energy, and effort into this intimate dialogue with his Heavenly Father, and that's really what prayer is. They asked him this question. Lord, teach us how to pray. And from this petition, my friends, we have the Our Father. So I'd like to 
spend some time going through and explaining the Our Father, also known as the Lord's Prayer. So let's start. Our Father. I'd like to relate this Our Father to a great blessing I had last night. Last night I had the privilege of seeing an excellent movie. It was Heart of a Servant, Boys Town, with Father Edward Flanagan, Servant of God. And I see that there is a real connection between the Our Father and this movie that I saw, inviting a lot of our people from the parish to come and see it. If you haven't seen it, I invite you to, maybe when it comes out and it's being streamed or some type of YouTube or DVD, uh, to see it. But the essence of this movie related to the Our Father is you have Father Father Flanagan who comes from Ireland studies in the Gregorian Rome comes back to the United States he's exercising his priesthood in Nebraska. And he sees these, these children, these boys, that are basically orphans. They're being neglected. And if they're neglected, they're probably going to turn to crime and be incarcerated. And the essence of the movie is that he said he didn't believe that there's any bad boy. He would try to bring out the good in people. And he believed in a universal brotherhood, that all of us are created in the image and likeness of God called to live out that commandment of Jesus, love one another as I have loved you. So the movie shows that he's bringing together these little boys and teenage boys of all different creeds. The white the black, the Hispanic, the Asian, bring them all together. There was the Jim Crow laws back then. We're talking about the early 20th century. In which there was segregation between the white and the black and the Jew. So he set up a, a center in which they were all united and this was seen against the law. So what he did was on the outskirts of the city of Omaha, he actually bought a huge, a huge plot of land and he set up Boys Town there. And eventually they'd have their own post office. And you just see an excellent commentary from a woman and, and several priests and wonderful photos of Father Flanagan which he would be the St. John Bosco of the United States. He was born basically when St. John Bosco was dying in Italy. in which you see this universal brotherhood 
And one of his one of his greatest opponents was the, the, the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan which was very prominent in the United States in the early 1900s. And they could have set up a hitman to kill him very easily, but it never happened because God protected him. There's a very touching scene that when after the Second World War there were Japanese immigrants they were basically secluded in these blocks of row houses and he opened up his boys town so that the Japanese would be accepted and received into our country it was really one it was really the first one really to kind of fight on, out against desegrega desegregation you got pictures of a ball team, black and white and Hispanic, playing together. This is the way God wants it to be. So I really see there is a, there is a real connection between the Our Father and the heart of the servant, Father Flanagan. He travel. He's born in. He travels back to Ireland, and he sees that the our deplorable situation for the, especially the children there. And he raises a complaint, and the Irish government gets very angry at him for decrying. So he went down the basement. He saw a big group of children making shoes with one little candlelight. And he was outraged because obviously this is going to hurt their eyes. So he raised a complaint. He came back to the United States and they basically blocked him out. Then he was called to Asia and Europe to promote his works. And then he made a movie, which Mickey Rooney became Father Flanagan. This made him popular all throughout the world. He wrote a letter to his friend Harry Truman, the President of the United States saying that he was willing to help to reconstruct the United States after the Second World War, especially in establishing centers to help out children. Because Father Flanagan was aware that many of the families would be fatherless because of the many deaths during the Second World War. He traveled to Europe his health was always very weak. So he was exhausted there and he dies in Germany in the year 1948. I was very touched by this movie. It's called The Heart of the Servant, Father Edward Flanagan was the father founder of Boys Town. And one of his classic phrases would be, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. So I think it's a good idea, my friends, when we we're praying, we're saying our prayers to conjure up some image that can help us to flesh this out. Some of the greatest father figures that I have 
which helps me to connect my it, for us to connect with God the Father we have to have some human image that we conjure up in our imagination now after seeing this movie the heart of the servant I have another image of what a father is called to be and by the way he's father of Flanagan and we priests we are called fathers we're called to be spiritual fathers These are some of my favorites when I when we say our father to imagine what the father what is the heavenly father like But my point I'm making right now is delving into the our father Jesus did not say my father but rather he said our father By saying our Father, he's saying that he's the Father to all, all of humanity. And if he is our Father, that means all of us are brothers and sisters. All of us are brothers and sisters. And every human person has innate dignity because he's created in the image and likeness of God. I say that he would be the St. John Bosco that he would be the St. John Bosco of the United States. He was the St. John Bosco. Let me tell you something interesting about St. John Bosco. Let's pray that we be able to really, when we pray the Our Father, really to make it, uh, take it to heart, the Our Father, to pray and really to try to understand and try to live out the Our Father. Father Flanagan and John Bosco were really parallel. John Bosco lived a little bit earlier. They were both born in the same century, but John Bosco was born in the beginning of it, and Father Flanagan at the, the tail end of it. Maybe some of you don't know, but the St. John Bosco was brought up and raised. St. John Bosco was brought up and raised without a father. So his father died when he was about two years old. So he was raised by his mother, Margarita. <clears throat> so isn't it ironic isn't it around that St. John Bosco, who was basically fatherless when he was growing up, went on to become the spiritual father of many children and boys. God can do anything. And I really see this with John Bosco as being opportune and providential because St. John Bosco being brought up and raised in great poverty. Sometimes there was not even any enough to eat in the evening. Being brought up and raised with great pro poverty that allowed him to understand the impoverished 
the poor children of his age, of his time. So St. John Bosco was a real father figure. In his case, it came as a result of what is called the Industrial Revolution that, that was radically transforming Europe in the, in the 1800s, starting in England and moving to Italy, northern Italy, Turin and Milan, which the family was going from an, an agrarian lifestyle to working in factories and the fathers were displaced and sometimes they were not home for their children. Consequently, the children and teens were left alone without any proper education and schooling. That means they would be wandering the streets and if they're wandering the streets then they would get into trouble. So John Bosco formed what is called the oratory to help to have boys and children forming vocational schools. There's a scene in The Heart of the Servant where any boy that would come to Boys Town, Father Flanagan would receive him with, with his arms open. A very touching scene because all of us are different. We're not created as carbon copies. All of us are different. We're created in the image and likeness of God, but all of us have different talents. So Father Flanagan would sit down and talk with the boy and ask him what he wanted to be. What was his dream? What was his desire? What was his goal? What was his plan? So he would talk to each one to see which was his talent. And then Father Flanagan would place him in an area where he would have to become, he'd have to be responsible, but be incumbent upon him to develop his own talents. I found that, that scene in the movie to be very touching because all of us, all of all of you in our perseverance, all of us are different. We all have we all have different treasures and talents. We all have the same time to develop our treasures and our talents. Another father figure that I admire very much. after admiring St. John Bosco, who was the father of the orphans of the 1800s in Italy, Father Flanagan of the 1900s in the United States. is a person of St. John Paul II. St. John Paul II definitely is a, a profound and sublime father figure. He was called Father when he was a priest, and he was called Holy Father from 1978 to 2005, one of the longest pontificates and one of the greatest men who's ever lived. John Paul II was really a father figure. One of the reasons why is because he had an excellent father. 
His mother died when he was about nine years old. His older brother died. His sister died before he was born, Olga. So basically, John Paul II shared a, a modest domicile with his father, who was a retired military officer. They would eat together, they would talk together. His father would go and see him playing soccer. But one of the things that John Paul II said about his father about his father was that he would get up, they'd be sharing the same room. He would open up his eyes in the early hours of the morning. He'd see his father kneeling down, enlightened by the moon. He said that after, after his father lost his wife, he, his father basically dedicated himself to deep and deep, a deeper and deeper prayer life. So Pope St. John Paul II, Pope St. John Paul II experienced the love of God the Father reflected by his only, own earthly father. John Paul II, when he said, Our Father who art in heaven, he most certainly would have thought about his own earthly father. My friends, we're, we're talking about the gospel for today, where the apostles draw close to the Lord and say, Lord, Teach us, Lord, teach us to pray. And then our Lord says, when you pray, say, Our Father. There are actually two versions of the Our Father. There's one in Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount. Today we have the Lucan version. I'm giving you father figures, Father Edward Flanagan, St. John Bosco, Pope St. John Paul II. I'd like to tell you also a uh, story, a personal anecdote that I had as my father, with my father. I'm very thankful and very privileged to say that I, my father passed away October 1st eight years ago. But I have a, just a lot of warm memories. Let me tell you, I'd like to tell you one anecdote. And my friends, we're talking about the Our Father, <coughs> talking about the Our Father with the purpose of, the purpose of giving you Father images so that when you pray, to your Heavenly Father, you'll be able to conjure up some image to help you to connect more with, with Him. In the movie The Case for Christ with Leah Strobel's 
there's one scene that says he has a father's wound. Many of us do have father's wounds. But these wounds can be healed. Okay, it's this. When I was about 17... I had one of my brothers was just, uh, he was just two years old. And my father, may he rest in peace. He, 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 he loved children. And he's going to end up with 39 grandchildren. And he, he just loved, to, he loved to play around with the grandchildren. And he loved his children. The nine of us. He um. He he would he he would give us piggyback rides, airplane rides, wheelbarrow rides. I mean, he was very much in very much involved in our lives. Even though he worked on Wall Street and. He never never spoke about his work, but there must have been a lot of pressure. They never brought his work problems home. So I remember this vaguely that my father would place my younger brother Jim on the top of the refrigerator. And he'd rock him back and forth. And my little brother loved this. He's maybe two, two, three years old. My mom didn't love it, but my little brother loved it. And every time he'd do that, he'd be laughing gleefully. <laughs> So it happened on one occasion, my dad had my brother Jim on the top of the refrigerator. He was rocking him back and forth, rollicking. And my brother Jim was really laughing. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, the little guy fell off the top of the refrigerator. But as he fell, he laughed all the more. Because he really never took his eyes off the eyes of my father. He never took his eyes. His eyes were riveted on, on the eyes of my father. I think almost oblivious to the fact that he was in a free fall. He never worried. And my brother, my, my father caught him in his arms and embraced him. Basically, that says it all. Basically, that says it all. And that's the way God the Father, I think, works with us. That image is that God lifts us up as did Father Flanagan, as did John Bosco, as did John Paul II. God lifts us up. He never knocks us down. The world can give us our knocks, right? But God always lifts us up. Even when we fall, God wants to lift us up like the father of the prodigal son. We're talking about father now. 
and we have the father of the prodigal son. But then now and then, like what happened with my little brother, now and then God is going to shake us. The reason why is because we, we have a tendency to be complacent. Because of original sin, we have a tendency to be lazy and to be complacent. That's right. So God has to shake us. And then even God has to challenge us to allow us to fall. As if there's a free fall, we're falling from the heights. And as my brother was falling, he, as Martha's pointing out, we have to have our eyes fixed on God. We have to have our eyes fixed on God. You know, you remember when you remember when our Lord was walking on the waters? The apostles cried out, It's a ghost. It's a ghost. Jesus said, get a hold of yourself, it is I. Peter says, if it's really you, if it's really you, tell me to walk on the waters. Jesus said, come. Peter lifted up his foot and he started to walk on the waters. He was walking toward the Lord. But then he started to sink. And he cries out, Save me, Lord. Jesus said, Man of little faith, why did you doubt? And the principal reason why Peter started to sink in the waves was precisely that, instead of riveting his attention, fixing his eyes on the Lord, he lifted up his gaze and perhaps paid more attention to the wind and the waves more than focusing his eyes on the face of Christ. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. So my friends, today we have Jesus teaching the apostles as well as us to pray. It's interesting we've only gotten through <clears throat> the first two words of the Lord's Prayer. And that is our Father. It's not simply my Father, our Father. And if we can say that, that means that all of us, if he is our father, Jesus is our older brother, the Holy Spirit is our best friend, and all of us are brothers and sisters in Christ. What I've done today, I've given you some images of a father that can help you to flesh out the prayer of our father when you say it. Fresh in my mind, from the heart of the servant, I have Father Edward Flanagan. Then they mentioned St. John Bosco. Then they mentioned St. Pope John Paul II. Then they told you a personal anecdote from my own father. 
So hopefully this this presentation has been helpful to you. I invite all of you to share our share our message to the whole world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May all of us experience the warmth, the tenderness, and love of our Heavenly Father. Amen.